Well, hello, hello, and welcome to the Headless Dam with Cloudinary Bootcamp, course lesson number four, an introduction to aspect ratios, resizing, and cropping of media. Today, presented by Jen Brisman. She's the Technical Instructional Designer for Developer Education at Cloudinary. I have a great interview with her. If you want to learn more about her, just go to the introduction section of this course, and you'll be able to uh, learn all about her. But without further ado, Jen, welcome. Glad to have you here. And Hi, Marcelo. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. I'm ha very happy to have you, and I'll let you get started. Anybody has any questions, put them in the chat, and uh, Jen, I'll jump in and ask. Have fun. Okay. Thanks. Okay, let's get started. Let's chat today about aspect ratios, resizing, and cropping. The main topics of this lesson are, as expected, aspect ratio, uh, resizing, cropping, and gravity. So I want to briefly touch on pixels and resolution as well, though, so that the rest of the lesson makes even more of an impact. Aspect ratio. So what is aspect ratio? Aspect ratio measures the proportional ratio relationship between the width and the height of an asset or a display or a sensor. They're written with width first, followed by height, and that's important, and it's expressed as those two numbers separated by a colon. So for example, a common aspect ratio is 16 to 9, which means it's 16 units wide and 9 units high. How many aspect ratios are there? Well, potentially an infinite amount, depending on how big assets can get, because every width-height combination creates a new aspect ratio. However, there is a set of standard aspect ratios, like 16-9 for video or 1 to 1 for Instagram photos, for example. Each common aspect ratio has a specific use case, though, and let's talk about some of the most common. Okay, so here's a summary page. So if, if you're in a rush, you can pause this or screenshot it, but I'd like to go into more detail about each of the common aspect ratios um, that we're at least going to talk about today. Let's give them each the attention that they deserve. All right, a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, it'll always be a perfect square. So this is commonly used for images on social media or logos on apps. And, um, you know, you can even think about team photos or profile pictures or images for a product gallery on Amazon. There are tons of use cases for one-to-one, -one, and it's really easy to spot it out in the wild because I think our eyes can really see well what a perfect square is. Okay, a three to two aspect ratio is a common size for sensors found in cameras. So this sensor right there um, and in phones. So this ratio is often used in print or on phones and um, it actually has its roots in 35 millimeter film photography. In fact, uh, many photographs taken with popular digital camera brands, so you can see here, uh, Sony, Canon, Nikon, um, they're in a three to two aspect ratio today. And images with this aspect ratio also include four by six photographs, um, which would be 1080 by 720. We'll get into that later. Also, uh, the three to two aspect ratio best embodies the golden ratio, which is based on the Fibonacci sequence. So many famous artists throughout history from Da Vinci to Michelangelo have used the golden ratio in their works. And that three to two aspect ratio also, um, it also relates to the rule of thirds, which is a widely used composition technique. And then also one more thing, there's a lot, of, there's a lot with three to two, um, logos on the web that are um, not those one-to-one -one icons um, that I showed before in this last slide here, um, not these icons, but when there's a logo that's a rectangle, um, it's going to be a three to two ratio. Old school TVs, anyone remember these? Uh, slightly taller than the three two, the four three rectangle was the most common aspect ratio for screen sizes before widescreen monitors became popular. So if you think about shows like Seinfeld or the older episodes of The Simpsons um, created decades ago before high def widescreen televisions were the standard, um, they were all developed in a four three aspect ratio. Five four, so that's a common aspect ratio for printed photographs with a five four ratio. Um, this ratio includes standard print sizes of four by five, eight by tens, 16 by twenties and 11 by 14s. 
Uh, five four was also the original aspect ratio in the early days of movies, and then as technology progressed, we widened out the frame to four three. And then uh, today, as we've as we've discussed, and we're going to get into next, the standard aspect ratio for film is 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 sixteen nine. So it's even widened more. I also wanted to mention that this gets slightly tricky when we talk about inches as we do for printing photographs in these examples here, because inches are not the same as pixels, uh, as you can imagine. And we'll get into that as well. But um, because I mentioned before that it's width first and then height, you might notice in this photo, I don't want it to be confusing because in this case um, for 5.4, you can see that the shorter side is not the five here. So with pictures, it's a little different because you can hang it on a wall or flip it either way. So that's where it gets a little tricky. And I, I want to, I want us to pay attention to that with the width height. Okay. Seven, five is the ratio for five by seven inch printed photos. Like I said, it's the same thing. You can flip it either way. And that's still a five by seven inch, depending on which way, but with aspect ratio, the order does matter. 69, that's become the standard aspect ratio for computer displays, um, hero images on the web. You can see in the top right corner, this about me banner and also high definition television. So this is commonly used also in motion pictures and the 69 ratio. It's just the widescreen video standard and it can provide a gorgeous cinematic feel for film cameras as well. And, um, but it is not a common ratio in still photography. So there are just different use cases for aspect ratios as you'll start to see. And also for video, 16.9 is typically seen as optimal because it's capable of the highest resolution, which we'll get into soon as well. And then like I was talking about with height or height width, this is an important distinction. So 916 aspect ratio is used for tall videos. And that became popular when smartphones were created with video capabilities. This is like Instagram stories. That's 1080 by 1920, which means it's a 916 aspect ratio, not a 169. Um, and this goes for any other popular apps that have story features like Facebook and Snapchat. So I think this visual is pretty helpful here on the left. Um, as we know, width comes first. And so in 169, we can see here that the width is longer in this orange visual here. Um, so the longest one, the width is 16 and the height is going to be um, nine, but in 916, the blue on the right, we can see that the width is shorter. And so many mobile phones allow for, for screen rotation. You might know where if you flip your phone and the video fills your screen, if you don't have it on lock, um, you can rotate it. And so, um, and this is this makes sense to have two different 16, 9, and 916 because the iPhone's camera video settings can record footage in both 916 and 16, 9. So I like this visual because on the right, we can see the different aspect ratios of this same image. So it's pretty powerful to see, and it really makes an impact which aspect ratio you use. And yes, it's possible to crop a bigger photo to be a smaller, like a one-to-one, -one, but um, there are different use cases. You probably wouldn't frame on the wall a one-to-one -one in this case when you have the extra space and the extra pixels. Uh, this, I like this slide because this slide conveys important information, right? One of them is obviously the technical information and what you see in all the different aspect ratios, but also what's important to understand as you're creating these kinds of images is the emotional effect of different yes. aspect ratios. Cause in filmmaking, right? They use different aspect ratios to, to bring out different emotions in the scene or to provide different time frames. And I think right. we could use that also for our websites and mobile apps and, and things like that. So absolutely. It makes yeah. such a difference. And it's all important to think about and to, to hear it in these technical terms. Um, I, I think it can kind of open your mind to what's possible from, from an artistic standpoint. Right. Exactly. Cool. Okay, so this visual, um, this is if you think about like a CSS grid layout, this visual should help you understand um, why there would be a need for 69 and 916. So in this case, where we wouldn't have the ability to uh, rotate like we would on a phone and have the asset adjust, a 916 clearly in this in this middle row here, the pink 169, a 916 clearly would not fit in that middle space here. So this shows that there is a need and and like this is just a use. Um, kind of an example of where aspect ratio would really be important um, on the web. And then this, speaking of the web, this is a helpful visual about common aspect ratios you'd find on websites. Responsive design helps maintain a specific shape for images and, and video across multiple devices. And to achieve this, images and videos will have a specific aspect ratio in the CSS. 
So here, a pretty simple one, but it's just easy. I just have these visuals. I'm, I'm a visual person. It, it makes an impact for me. So you can easily visualize aspect ratio by allocating units to the width and height of an image. So for example, the four three on the left would consist of four equal size units for its width and then three for its height. And then on the right, the orange three, two, that's going to be represented by three equal size units for its width and two for its height. And you'll notice the unit size in this visual, it's not the same from the four, three to the three, two, that doesn't matter. You know, the, the line on the, the right is a little longer line than the, than the lines here with the arrows on the left. And it, it's really, that doesn't matter. It's about the unit size in relation to each other. It's about the real, the, the ratio and the proportion and really the fraction. So I hate to use the word fraction because it seems to be a trigger word for many of us, maybe maybe bringing us back to high school. Um, but that's really what aspect ratios are. They're fractions. I know. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But th that is true. And that's a good way to think about it. Fractions. Okay. So black bars. Let's talk about this for a second. One way to change your video's aspect ratio is to add these black bars. You've probably seen them before and they, they fill the extra space when the aspect ratio of the screen and then the content don't match. They don't line up. So this is kind of the only good option for streaming services. Um, it's to add that black bar or else they'd have to cut out part of the top or, or the bottom of the frame. So there unfortunately isn't a magic solution that removes these black bars without altering the asset. So the two things you can do are fit in the middle here. So that's kind of like a stretch, which retains all of the information in the original asset, but it distorts the image to fit your screen. So you can see that's that's not great. Her face is kind of stretched out. It, it doesn't look right. Or you could do a crop, which is equivalent to a zoom. Um, but it removes a piece of the asset. So in this case, this cuts off part of this person's head, which is not great. But um, I like this visual because it's it's a good representation of why black bars are necessary to maintain aspect ratio. And so, yeah, and it's also an alternative to cropping your video. You know, it, it, it keeps the integrity of the original picture. So maybe you're trying to fit an old video um, or an old movie into your um, into a screen, it, it would, it wouldn't be respectful to crop out the original asset and its original intent. Uh, and uh, another thing to point out, I think with, with, you have columns here, right? But, um, when you have the bars horizontal, the, the rows, I think people are more used to that and actually, uh, like that better than columns. I think. I totally agree. I totally agree. I think either way, the black bars aren't necessarily the most appealing, but I think we are more used to, um, in a movie theater or, or like right. that, that widescreen look versus like a, a cropped, cropped right. in column look. Right. Totally. Exactly. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So aspect ratio is not the same as resolution or pixel count. So we've kind of talked about numbers a lot in the past few minutes, but what do they mean? What is what is the unit of measurement? So it's important to remember that the aspect ratio of an image refers to its dimensional ratio, but not the actual resolution or total pixels that an asset contains. So for example, in this visual here, a square, so a one-to-one -one aspect ratio asset could be 300 by 300 pixels as we have on the left, or it could be 1500 by 1500 pixels as we have on the right. It's still a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. If you remember that um, that visual before with, with the rectangles and those different size um, lines with the arrows, it's really just about are, are the width and the height equal. That makes it a one-to-one. -one. So now I've, I've kind of talked about pixels and resolution. So let's take a minute to define it. I think it'll really make a difference. So pixels. A pixel is the basic logical unit in digital graphics or the smallest unit of a digital image or graphic that can be displayed and represented on a digital display device. It's represented by a dot or a square on a computer monitor display screen. Um, you can kind of see in this top right, you can imagine those are little pixels there. And they're the basic building blocks of a digital image and, and they're created using geometric coordinates. So depending on the graphic card or the display monitor, the quantity, 
size, and color combination of pixels varies, and it's measured in terms of the display resolution, which we'll get into next. So the pixel resolution spread also determines the quality of display. So more pixels per inch of a monitor screen yields a better image or asset result. It's going to be more clear. And then also the physical size of a pixel varies depending on the resolution of, of the display you are on. And uh, it will equal the size of the dot pitch if the display is set to its maximum resolution. And it'll be larger if the resolution is lower since each pixel will use more dots. So because of that, individual pixels may become visible leading to that blocky, chunky image, which you've probably heard the word pixelated before, which is which is not what we want. Okay, so here is a Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jotte, which was painted from 1884 to 1886 and is George Seurat's most famous work. This here is a leading example of pointillist technique, um, and this is executed on a large canvas. So I like to think of all of the dots that make up this picture as pixels. So if you're not familiar with pointillism, you can more clearly see what I mean in this cropped, cropped keyword um, and close up portion of another one of Surratt's paintings here on the right. The realistic um, looking objects that you see in the painting, they're composed of all these little tiny dots. And when you put a bunch of digital pixels together, they make a complete image. So before digital images existed, we had pointillism. This isn't an official, you know, like, you know, don't quote me on this. This isn't exactly how it works, but it's, it's a cool way to visualize how pixels work. Resolution. Image resolution is the detail that an image holds. So the term applies to digital images, film images, and, and any type of image. Um, and higher resolution means more detail. Resolution quality refers to the number of pixels in an image. Image resolution is typically described in PPI, which refers to how many pixels are displayed per inch. Higher resolutions mean that there are more pixels per inch um, or a higher PPI, resulting in more pixel information and creating a high quality, crisp image. Also, kind of a fun fact, the term resolution, well, it's equivalent to pixel count in digital imaging. Um, so that's just, it's, it's kind of like all these things, putting it together. And that's why it's kind of important to mention this when we're talking about all these concepts, because it's important to understand how they all relate to each other. And also with a pixel, it's a picture element. So the pix in pixel comes from picture and the L in um, the end of pixel comes from element. So it's a picture element. So combining these two topics that we just defined here, pixels and resolution, here's an illustrated version of how the same image might appear at different pixel resolutions. So resolution quality here refers to the number of pixels in an image. And a pixel is so tiny that you can't see it with the naked eye. But when you put a bunch of pixels together, like if you think about that George Surratt painting that I showed before, they can make a complete image. The more pixels, the more detailed that image can be and the higher the resolution. So the poorly rendered sharp squares in this example make the point better. So, okay, first of all, note that each of these has a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. They're all perfect squares, you know, from the 50 to 50 to the two to two, they're perfect squares. But if you look at this five by five, um, you can't see what the, what the picture is supposed to be. It's getting a little clear at 20 by 20. It's more clear at 50 by 50, but at 100 by 100, more PPI, higher resolution, we see the image clearly. Okay, to get a little nerdy here, here is the formula for calculating aspect ratio. So say you have a photo that's 1600 by 1200 pixels, but your blog maybe only has space for a photo that's 400 pixels wide. To find the new height of your photo while preserving the aspect ratio, you would need to do the following calculation. 1200 divided by 1600, and then that number times 400, um, or your new width, and that will give you 300. So that is your new um, height. So the good news is you probably won't ever have to use this formula because image editing software like Cloudinary have aspect ratio tools and AI to do this for you, but it's good to understand. But I hope you never have to actually um, plug 
plug these um, a new width into this formula to find your new height. But this is how how it does work. And real quick on that, because yeah. in tools, right, sometimes when you're resizing, you have a little icon that says lock the aspect ratio. And yes. that's where you can put in like whatever width you want to automatically will calculate. And so people can start tying this together where that little lock is actually doing this formula for you automatically in, let's say, Photoshop. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And that, that's such a common that's such a common little little box to see. And you can check it or uncheck it. But when you uncheck it, we're going to see what happens with that in some of the upcoming slides. Yep, totally. Okay, so 1080p resolution means the image has 1920 pixels horizontally and 1080 vertically, 1920 by 1080. So you can find the total pixels in the image by multiplying those two numbers, so the height and the width, together, meaning a 1080p image has more than 2 million pixels. So full HD, it's another term for 1080p or 1920 by 1080. And those are always referring to the same resolution. By contrast, 4K has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. So that's a lot more pixels in the overall image, totaling over 8 million pixels. So 2 million to 8 million pixels means 4K is four times the resolution of HD. And as always, the higher the resolution, the sharper the picture will be. So circling back to our good friend aspect ratio, 1020 by 1920 by 1080 is a 169 aspect ratio. If you remember what we were talking about before, 169 widescreen TVs, that's that's the aspect ratio. So why is aspect ratio important? Software developers are creating content for both smartphones and PCs, and they need to account for different displays. And as we've learned, there are so many standards, and I mentioned just the most common ones. Um, there are so many, and different standards for different use cases. Also, the aspect ratio can even vary um, on a PC, depending on what monitor it's paired with. So older square looking monitors use a 4-3 aspect ratio, as we looked at before, while mainstream monitors are more typically 16-9. And then the super wide monitors, maybe you've seen, have aspect ratios of 32-9, which is one that we didn't talk about. Thankfully, the computer's operating system can actually accommodate multiple aspect ratios and adjust to fit whatever monitor is connected. So that's pretty cool. So you don't have to think about it. Um, and then another reason why aspect ratio is important is photographers and, and also videographers might need to change the aspect ratio of a photo through cropping. So for example, Cloudinary's crop and resize options and transformations, they allow you to change the aspect ratio after the photo has been taken. So, and that's kind of like what we looked at, at that Canyon in, in that photo where it showed all the different aspect ratios on the right, um, it does change the emotional impact of an image. So it's something you want to understand even before content is captured um, and is first taken into um, taken into the, the sensor, the camera, your phone, um, uh, a DSLR camera. I think really important too is an understanding your audience, right? Because if, if let's say you're a photographer or a filmmaker, yeah. then your audience are going to be film buffed, let's say. So then you want to have the proper aspect ratio for them. You don't want to have, if, if 21, nine is what most of your audience wants, but if you're a photographer, you may want a different aspect ratio, but keep, I think it's important to understand who your audience is and how they, they look at your website, web page, whatever it is. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's such an important thing to think about. And even through this lesson, I've kind of been crossing, crossing between um, talking about um, video and images and on the web or photography, like all different, like it really does matter who your audience is and, and who the person capturing the footage is. And I mean, really, there's there are so many different aspect ratios to think about. So that's like this main this bullet in the center. It doesn't say much, but like, there are so many standards, period, mic drop. There are there's so many things to account for. Right, right, definitely. Okay, resizing. Resizing an image is typically thought of as simply changing the physical dimensions of the image. I really want you to sit with that for a second, changing the physical dimensions of the image. So when an image is resized, its pixel information is changed. And what resize really means is rescale or to establish a new dimension. So to scale down, reduce proportionally, to scale up, increase proportionally. And then in order to not crop an image, 
the aspect ratio or the proportion, as we've talked about, should, I say should, always be maintained with a resize. So we can really get into semantics here. I say should because you can definitely resize and not maintain the aspect ratio, but but you'll often end up with a visibly skewed image in that case. And so the main takeaway I want to be understood here is that a resize is not the same as a crop where we're removing a piece of the original image. And so we'll get into cropping next. And then um, lastly, decreasing the dimension will reduce the file size, which can help with optimization. And if you think about it, the first step in optimization is resizing. We won't go into the weight of media assets today, but there will be other lessons in this series that dive deeper into compression and optimization. Okay, so resizing gone wrong. At Cloudinary, scaling and maintaining aspect ratio means they handle the aspect ratio formula we discussed earlier for you. So all you need to do is specify the width or the height parameter and Cloudinary will actually automatically pick the other dimension for you. So you can see here um, in this example, of a baseball that all of the parts of the field are maintained in both of the outcomes, the one on the top here, and then the, the one on the bottom with these uh, red exclamation points uh, to indicate that's probably not what we want. So they're both maintained, but but yeah, we can, we can see the bottom. It's probably not what someone would be going for. Um, so in this example of what I would call an oops, we see that if we specify width and height, and, and those values don't match the original aspect ratio, it may result in a skewed image like this stretched out baseball at the bottom. So I'd call this an example of when a resize goes wrong and you want to leave it up to the AI um, or pull out that aspect ratio calculator and, um, and use that formula I gave before. Um, but so that's why I said a resize, it should maintain the aspect ratio, but like you can stretch it, but this isn't really what people are going for. Okay, let's look at a little code here and see how we'd make resizing happen programmatically. So the original asset on the top right here is 1434 by 959. It's always width by height, as we know order matters. And we are asking in the code here for 300 by 400. This is to give an example of how certain media editing tools can help you out. So the fit crop, which um, we define in the URL Cloudinary as C fit will maintain the aspect ratio. And even though we specify both the width and the height, so think to that stretch out baseball, it just goes with the width here because the AI knows it's it's going to skew the image. So it wouldn't maintain the aspect ratio if it changed 1434 by 959 to 300 by 400. So it's going to keep the first, the width 300, but then it's going to give us in the result 300 by 201 pixels. And then you can see the aspect ratio. It's totally maintained. So no part of this original image of this person with the Dalmatian is removed. We have every single piece of the image maintained in the resize here. Quick, quick question. Um, yeah. If we want to maintain the height, not the width, would we just not include the width? Because you said if you include both, yeah. the crop fit will, will take the width. Yes, that's a great question. So you can provide either the width or the height. If you provide both and you don't maybe know what you're doing, then I think it'll take the width. But if you just provide the height, it can listen to the height. Um, I think the default is that it takes the width first if you provide both. But yes, you can only provide the height and Cloudinary will, will pick the width for you. Cool, cool, cool. Cropping. We've mentioned this term a few times now, but let's define it very simply. What is cropping? Cropping is the process of removing a portion of an asset. And cropping can also help you reframe your subject or attract the viewer's attention to a specific, oh, this is supposed to be a video of, of, of this image being cropped. So <laughs> uh, it's not happening, but just imagine that part of the image is being taken out and, and just the dog's eyes are being focused on. So yeah, cropping can, can help you reframe your subject or maybe attract a viewer's attention to a specific part of your photo of your choosing for a greater impact. Okay, so there are many different ways to crop images, and these listed here are just the most common. Uh, Cloudinary specifically offers over 14 cropping modes currently, and, and more are often being developed, but each cropping option has a different use case. I'm going to very quickly go through some of the most common types of crops. Okay, cropping, you can decide how to crop the image to fit into the requested height and width, and there are many different options. There are even more in this in this gray box where thumb is selected. If you look down, there are even options I'm, I'm not about to discuss, but there, there are so many. So scale, which is actually the default at Cloudinary, resizes the asset, exactly to the specific width and height, 
all asset parts are visible and kept, but it might be stretched or shrunk if the dimensions you request have a different aspect ratio than the original. So if only width or only height is specified, as Marcella was asking before, um, the asset scaled to the new dimension while retaining the original aspect ratio. So that's that's the recommendation. And then, and then you don't have to worry about figuring out the aspect ratio on your own. And then we have fit. So the asset is resized so that only it takes up as much space or that it can take up as much space as possible within a bounding box defined by the given width and height parameters. Then we have limit. So it's the same as fit mode, but only if the original asset is larger than the given limit. We have fill. So that um, creates an image with the exact given width and height while retaining the original aspect ratio using only part of an image that fills the given dimensions. We have crop, so we can extract a given width and height out of the original asset. When width and height are defined, it will use that aspect ratio. And uh, if only width or height is defined, then it will retain the original proportions or aspect ratio. Um, pad, resize to fill the given width and height, retaining the original aspect ratio. So if the proportions of the original asset don't match the given width and height, padding is added to reach the required size. And um, it will pad with, with white background for non-alpha image format or transparent background for alpha transparent image format. Um, that's just what we do at Cloudinary, or you could specify um, a different color in another transformation. This is a Cloudinary specific. We have thumb. So this is the last one I'm going to talk about, and this will apply to our example. Uh, this cropping mode generates a thumbnail of an image with the exact specified width and height dimensions and with the original proportions retained, but the resulting image might be scaled to fit in the specified dimensions. I went through these really quickly um, because it's not the most interesting, but it's really what's most important is for you to understand that there are so many cropping options and you get to be the boss and decide how you want to crop your assets. It's just important to understand how it works. Yeah. This one is a cool one, actually, the thumb, because if you think of, let's say, a team page on a website, right? Yes. And you have, yes. and people have, if you're holding the information of, um, of team members in a headless CMS and yes. they all have big 8 by 10 pictures, whatever yes. you store in there, you can uh, just create thumbs for your team page without yeah. having to recreate new images, right? Yes, exactly. And if you're letting users um, upload user generated content, um, you can kind of only save the thumb if you want. Like that's an option upon upload um, to save space. And another cool thing is a lot of team photos, like what you mentioned, Marcelo, have um, they'll they'll use rounding. And so instead of the right. square, like in this example, they'll round it. And if the aspect ratio is one to one, there are a lot of um, you know you can apply uh, rounded corners. And if it's a one to one aspect ratio, that 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 perfect square, you can mm -hmm. round the corners and it'll make a perfect circle. And a lot of team pages are and keep um, the focus on the face. Yes, right. exactly. Okay, so enough about cropping for now. Um, let's talk about gravity. So this is a cloudinary feature, but I, I think it's important to understand all of these concepts and how they tie together. So what is gravity? It's seriously one of my favorite cloudinary specific topics to discuss and to teach about. So gravity is a qualifier or transformation parameter that determines which part of an asset to focus on and thus which part of the asset to keep when any part of the asset is cropped. And for overlays and underlays, this setting determines where to place the overlay or underlay. Okay. So instead of explaining gravity, I'm just going to show you what this um, is like in action. So here we have on the left, um, the original image. And then in the middle, we see a crop without using AI to determine points of interest. So now let's head over to the browser and see what this looks like. And so I expect that if I add here automatic gravity, I will get the face. And the reason for that is um, that is determined as the most interesting part of the image here. So we can do this on the fly. We can, when starting with this image, that's not very interesting. It just found the center of the image for that crop under her arm. That's not what anyone would probably be going for. Here we have the focus on the most interesting part, which is the face. And I also want to share a resource with you where you can experiment with cropping with, at Cloudinary, but this would apply for, for understanding cropping in general. And you can understand um, cropping and, and gravity. So here we have um, an interactive demo here. Uh, so if we're not using gravity, um, this is what it looks like down in the bottom. If we apply gravity here, 
that's we're not we're not spe specifying an object. It's just going to find the center. So um, you can kind of play around with with different settings. You have C fit. You can add padding here if you're and with certain cropping modes, you can't use gravity. So you know, C scale, you can't use gravity because you're going to maintain all of the parts of the photo. But thumbnail, that would be a good one to use gravity. And if I click apply settings, um, it's going to find um, the center of the photo or the most interesting part of the photo. Um, and this is kind of something you can you can play around with on your own. And another thing that you can do is, um, and you can find specific objects in the photo. So um, if you want to focus on just the handbag, you can do G underscore handbag to find, um, you can use object detection um, as well. Quick question. Uh, if yeah. you go back to padding real yes. quick, because I noticed you said that before it would put white, but it looked like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it looked like it picked sort of the the average yeah. background color right which is kind of cool it yeah. seems like right yeah it, that it, is cool yeah I, I wasn't even and thinking about that um but yeah so this uh b auto um background auto this is a parameter in here it'll that pick an average it looks like yeah it'll it'll pick an average color so yeah i didn't even think about that um but i just looked at the url here and i see b auto and i I'm but that's very sure. cool because that's definitely much better than having white or black as your background because this kind of at least it, it blends in a little better yes exactly exactly and you can also um yeah there there are different images you can play around with here and um there's a lot you can do and it kind of helps you understand because it'll gray out what's not possible with certain kinds of crops. So for instance, like a scale, we talked about that scaling, like resizing, um, gravity is an option because is not an option because gravity is something that you would use with a crop to help you find the most interesting part of the photo to, to use the AI to crop it, um, accordingly. Cool. The power of automatic gravity does work with video. Um, this is great news to a lot of people. So automatic gravity selection ensures that the most interesting areas are selected as the main focus throughout the duration of each video. So each video is analyzed behind the scenes to find the optimal region using heat mapping and allowing you to adjust the size or aspect ratio to fit all of your requirements. So um, the optimal region of the video could be moving from frame to frame and the cropped area will adjust accordingly. So let's look at Giotto in action. So here we have the original video of this dog jumping up in slow motion, catching the Frisbee. It's really exciting. Um, this is the original aspect ratio we're looking at. This is probably not on a phone. Then here we have what it might look like on a phone. This is not using Giotto. So if I play this here, Oh, the dog. Oh, we missed the catch. Okay, that's kind of a bummer. That was the most exciting part. All right, maybe we'll still get the landing. Oh, no, the dog's out of view. So the third video I'm going to show you is the power of how gravity works um, with video, too. So this might be um, on a mobile device, um, that tall video that we talked about before. And Wow. So the dog center, we're going to, oh, we're going to get the whole catch of the Frisbee. We're still focused on the dog. It's in the center of the screen and we're going to get the landing. Okay. So that really, you can really see the difference that that makes. So that to me is super cool because it seems like it's, it, it has a window of the aspect ratio you want and it's moving the window on top of the video yes. on the object, right? Keeping, I mean, that's really what it's doing where the second one, it just cropped the video that, yeah. and that's it. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and then you miss some of the most important parts. So yeah, the optimal region of the video, it could be moving from frame to frame and like this cropped area is going to adjust automatically right. accordingly for you. So that's, it's Based a Based on cool the thing. object detection that it yeah, is. Yeah, and the heat mapping. Uh, right, very yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay, so back to the slides, we can see, we can see um, these three videos I have here paused at seven seconds on all three. So it's even clear in the freeze frame in that middle video without Giotto that the AI is making a huge impact because you look if you look at the same seven second freeze frame on the third with Giotto, the dog is totally centered and um, the main focus. Okay, so this um, 
Python code combines most of the things that we've discussed in today's lesson. So this code is um, performing a thumbnail or thumb crop transformation. And it's technically a resize. So you'll see the name of this function. It's called resize with crop. But I wanted to make that distinction early on. This that technically all res whenever you crop, it's also a resize. So that's what's what's kind of tricky about understanding. So any time that you will um, change the dimensions or or do do really anything to um, an, an asset size, it's a resize, but a crop isn't a resize. Anyway, that's why I like to think of resize as scale. But um, so, okay, this this code performs um, a thumbnail crop, technically a resize, but it's a crop um, we're, because we're removing part of the original asset. So when we ask for a thumb, we'll get the exact dimensions we specified. So we are specifying both the width and height. And since the dimensions are exactly the same, We'll get this perfect square that we've been talking about, which is a one to one aspect ratio. And we're using the AI, you see gravity face. We're using the AI to detect the person's face and, and find uh, the person's uh, face and exclude the dog's face, um, just, just the person's face here. And um, as you can see, we get this perfect square, this 400 by 400 as the result. And you, it's also very clear, you don't see the dog, you don't see much of the pink background. Um, we are definitely removing chunks of this asset um, and it's definitely a crop. And this is another one that, as Marcelo was saying, would be good for, um, you know, team photos, company photos, profile pictures. And you could round it to make a circle because um, with this perfect aspect ratio, it would make um, a perfect circle and not an oval or something less less desirable. And in Cloudinary's documentation, I'll even tell you to use gravity face with thumb because it's usually to find a thumbnail of a face like for this use case that Marcelo brought up. Um, and uh, gravity instructs Cloudinary to always use its AI capabilities to focus, um, in this case, on the face. Um, but as we saw before, you could focus on an object like handbag, or if you just say Giotto, it will um, do its best to find the most interesting part of the photo. Um, yeah, so that's kind of tying everything together and with some simple code on the left to understand how you would do this programmatically. Okay, so here are the topics we covered today. They're all related to each other in their own ways, some of which some of those ways which you heard about in this lesson today. And understanding these topics and how they relate to each other conceptually is a really important step to understanding media management. So um, I hope everybody learned something today. I had a lot of fun talking about it. I've included some resources on the next slide that I relied on to build this lesson. Feel free to check any of them out. And thank you so much. I've, oh. I've had such a fun time today. Jen, that was amazing. I didn't know there was so much to aspect ratios. I've, <laughs> I've always been into aspect ratios, but especially on the film side. Yeah. Um, but man, I've learned so much today. Oh, uh, really, that was really, really good stuff. So thank you so much. If people want to get hold of you, that email is the best place. Absolutely. Yes. Jen.Brisman at cloudinary.com. Always reach out for if you have any questions about today's lesson or if you have any questions at all. I'm always here. And Marcelo, thank you so much for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you, Jen. And thanks to the rest of you for watching. And remember to continue your journey learning all about digital asset management systems by watching the next lesson, which is coming up in a couple of weeks. Also, remember, if you want to get your knowledge certification, make sure you use the study guide, which is included uh, with this uh, lesson in the bonus section of the course. And as always, that's my email address right there. Uh, get a hold of me, marcelo at headlesscreator.com. So until the next lesson, have a great one, everybody.